Hello, I'm Ian McIntosh and welcome to the Bet Bright Football Manager Project. Extra bonus material, special video. Join us, we're going to have a tactical breakdown because naturally I am the most qualified person to do that. Alex not being available at short notice. One of the things you'll find when you play Football Manager is that there's kind of two stages to the first season. The, the period that I feel is a kind of, Jesus Christ, please don't get me sacked, please don't get me sacked. And then the period when you've done just about enough to feel relatively comfortable in your job, when you can start looking at wider issues like scouting and the youth team and coaching and talking to real human beings and perhaps having sex from time to time. Now this is one of those times, because that win against Rangers, I'm sure you saw, has bought me an awful lot of time. Now I can be a little bit more comfortable and I can get back to thinking about my overall philosophy which is not just to win with Celtic, but to win playing beautiful football. And not just to win with beautiful football, but to win with kind of homegrown players, going in the direction of Lisbon Lions, not, you know, all from 20 minutes away from Parkhead, but at least trying to make sure that the bulk of the players coming through are Scottish. But the first issue we've had to deal with is tactics. Now, you may recall when the season started, I had some perhaps unrealistic ideas about the strength of the Scottish Premiership, played quite an aggressive 4-3-3 uh, and got absolutely gubbed at home by St Johnston. Now, you know, we made the bulk of the chances, hit the woodwork twice, some really decent moments, so you can read that into it. but. Ultimately, we, we left ourselves too open and, and we can't do that. You'll also remember that period where we weren't scoring goals, but we weren't shipping them either. And you can see that here we had a sort of 4 1 4 1, which, you know, was solid, but again, not really going down this philosophy line of playing gorgeous attacking football. Now, a couple of days ago, Celtic battered <laughs> Rangers. Um, helped a little way, I think, by Alex's tactics, but by playing this, this much more exciting 4-3-3. However, if you've read the latest update, you'll know we did win the next two games, but both St Johnston and Aberdeen gave us problems, frequent problems, getting in behind these guys. We just weren't solid enough, so it's like we've, we've got the attacking stuff back, we're getting the goals, but in doing so we've compromised ourselves at the back. So, I've spent rather more time than I'd like to admit bounding around the internet, trying to find some way of getting a perfect balance. And what I've got now is what I've been testing with Everton all morning. It's what I tested with West Bromwich Albion yesterday. Hopefully, it's a perfect middle ground with little flexes to uh, react to moments in the game. So, again, it's a 4-1-4-1, but there's a lot of team instructions. Now, you see, one of the fullbacks can attack, and in this case, Tierney looks like the obvious choice. There's this little defensive triangle. Try not to worry about the personnel in there at the moment. That will change from match to match. But this defensive triangle should keep me fairly safe, as well as having one fullback with his eye behind him as well. Then up here, it's attacking wingers, attacking wingers, supporting central midfielder and attacking central midfielder, and a complete forward who looks to bring other people into the game. Now that. Combined with being flexible and attacking means we're going to try and get the ball forward and then get people forward so that we attack as one kind of gorgeous homogenous mass and then we all get back again before we get gubbed 4-1 at home to St Johnston. Just briefly, what was it like returning to Everton, the, uh, the scene of the crime if you will, to, to take over again and experiment with this new tactical plan? I won't lie to you, it took a lot of courage took a lot of courage to go back there. All I have to do is see the name Gerard Delafoyer and, and I start to sweat um, quite a lot. But I felt that I had learned things um, and that I needed, to, I needed to face down those demons. And uh, I also needed to make sure transfers were turned on this time so that I could replace some of the awful incompetent tribe that seems to be earning a fortune now. You, uh, you spent 10 million on Andrea Polly from uh, AC Milan, is that right? Yes, yes. Is he someone you'd maybe look at for Celtic if you could get him, or, or will you be looking at January transfers? Not so much. When it comes to transfers for Celtic, ideally I want young Scottish players. I might make an exception for very, very good young foreign players, but as much as possible, I want to make it homegrown. I say this isn't just about winning, it's winning in a certain style. Alex has got his way, which involves 
eating scientific calculators and burping up numbers, and that's fine. I'm sure at some point it will start to pay dividends. But I want to do it this way, this, this more sort of hands-on, locally produced way. Alex Campbell says, are you really the Norwegian Jim White? I've been struggling with this image since yesterday. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate that my friends at TV2 have invited me to partake in their transfer deadline day for, I think, pretty much every deadline day for the last five years. It's always a great pleasure to be out there. And there's another comment here saying, uh, is this what it was like when uh, Da Vinci presented the Mona Lisa for the first time? I think he's talking about a tactic rather than your beautiful face. Yeah, well, I, I like to think I have an enigmatic smile as well. Let's have a closer look at the team instructions because one of the things that a lot of people say is don't overload your players with instructions. I think that's probably good advice towards the start of your, your development. But by this point, as you'll see, familiarity is starting to kick in and we can start to look. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've certainly noticed a lot of goals coming from the flank. So we're going wide, we're getting out on the flanks, and we're looking for that overlap and send as many people in there and get those crosses in nice and quick. So we haven't got great big target there, and we've got, we've got very good technically adept strikers. So we want to we wanna keep the ball, we want to use it properly and get it out there. And every tactic has a, another version. So there's one here where we attack, where we're pushed up quite far forward. There's another one where we drop a little deeper um, and hit people on the counter. That's generally going to be a starting formation. And then I found that I can never get through a team that's playing that sort of formation. It still gives us something on the counter, but hopefully that should, that should lock games down quite nicely. So that's the way we're going to be progressing now as we look to consolidate this newfound stability of winning three games on the bounce. Um, you will also have noticed, uh, if you read today's update, that Alex has changed his formation as well. Now what he's trying to do here is recreate Herrera's Inter Milan Catanacchio, um, which is very, very interesting. Uh, it did work immediately with a 5-0 win away at Dundee, but I'm not sure that this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. I want mine to be more free-flowing, more progressive. Now, the other thing that you can do when you get to this stage is you can start to work more with your youth players and your reserve players. So you'll see these little yellow dots around every single player, which is where I've started to make notes. Good prospect, lacks pace. Uh, Nathan Critchwell says, what formation do you switch to when Chopper Brown gets his customary 13th minute red card? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he's through that. It depends on the state of the game, but probably removing the defensive midfielder and just going with a 4-4-1, but also probably changing some of the player roles, making one of those midfielders a bit more defensive. But if you're reduced to 10 men, you're in a lot of trouble anyway. A few people have uh, recommended promoting Christopher Ayer from the bench. He's, only, <laughs> you know, he's quite young though, isn't he? Um, what's, what's your thoughts on him? Because he's a big prospect in FM17. Yeah, I think he's going to be a fantastic player. Um, and you can see he's, he's really kicking on in training very well. He's getting a little bit of game time. Hasn't done anything spectacular yet, but that's fine. He's 18, it'll come. Um, I think there's, uh, there's a really great future for him here at the club. However, I've got so many midfielders that I can't even get Stuart Armstrong, um, who came in to help out when we were all knackered after the cup game. I can't get him in the team. I can't get Ryan Christie, um, another fine technical player. I can't get him in the team either. So we're a little bit overloaded. So it's a very good time to get a few games here or there, mainly kick on with training. But ultimately, I think he's one for next season in the off chance that they haven't sacked me by then. He's got great hair as well. He has. That's a That's a comprehensive side parting. Um, so when you work with the under 20s, obviously we, we can't play the games because me and Alex are spending enough time together already as it is, but you can at least work with them, work with each individual player and make sure that whatever they're doing in training actually helps. Um, we have a phenomenal amount of young goalkeepers. I think if anything, in fact, Celtic just have too many players. Now we have uh, 4.2 million, 29 million in the bank, a transfer budget of 4 million. And there have been a lot of questions about what we're going to do with that, um, who we're going to spend it on. The thing is, right now, I'm not that convinced that we need more players for the first team. We've probably got too many at the moment. So the plan at the moment, as you'll see from the shortlist, is to find young players. Um, hopefully, I can find some way of bringing that age on. Um, 
but getting really good young players. You see St Johnston, who are absolutely flying away at the top of the Premiership right now. There's a lot of players I'm keeping an eye on there. This guy, Callum Patterson, gives us something else with those long throws. Look at all that pace. He'll be perfect for an attacking fullback role. So he looks like a lot of fun. I'd rather spend the money on getting lots of players like that and working with them. However, when people like Tom Carroll come up, that's worth a look as well. You know, we could probably bump a bit of money on him and then we've got an outstanding player. Though the ones of you with uh, good short-term memory will know we already have quite a lot of midfielders. But one to keep an eye on anyway. You're a bit of a purist, aren't you, with all the uh, attribute masking and, and the scouting. Do, do you read anything like on the forums about like searching for players or you know people to look out for or do you just like to do it all in the game? As much as possible I try to stay away from articles that list wonder kids or, or anything like that because I don't want to know, I want to find out. Though it should also be said that my luck with this game has been so poor that I haven't actually completed one single season yet. I've been sacked as Everton manager, um, I had experiences with West Brom um, that, that, that dissuaded me from continuing too much further. Um, I only got halfway through a season with Southend before starting the Everton project, so I haven't actually got that far through anyway, so I'm very much blind into this. Tactics are the more important thing, tactics is where I've struggled and hopefully now with these three plans we should start to see Celtic kick on and regain their rightful place 17 points ahead. Aidan Parr says, do you set up your own training regimes? Yep, very much. We are working on attacking all the way um, to try, <laughs> try and make us you know, lean into this, this philosophy of being a gorgeous team. We're also working on attacking movement before games, trying to make as many chances as possible. The coaches have all been set up. There's not much we can do here. It's difficult to get really, really good coaches, but we are pretty much ahead of the board in most categories, so we're, we're looking good there. And then individual players in the... Uh, in the under 20 side have all, I think absolutely all of them, have got some kind of additional focus that will help them develop as players. And you know what, if they don't break into the first team at Celtic, maybe the work they do here will help them carve out a career elsewhere, because we can. Peter Yule says, uh, do you need to play reserve players and young players in the first team to really bring them on, or you know, in cup games, or, or do you take quite a hands-on approach with the under, under 20 squad? As soon as you start playing youngsters in the first team, you'll start to notice their attributes go up as they get more experience. The higher level of football they play, the more they kick on. The only catch, of course, is that you're playing young players whose mental attributes in particular will be a lot lower. You can speed this up a little bit by sending people out on loan, but that's not something I wanted to do in the first season. I want to keep people close, I want to see what they can do and, and, and work with them on a one-to-one -one basis every day. So, looking ahead, Celtic will be in the Champions League against Basel and then two very important games against Partick Thistle and Hearts as we try to reel in the weirdly brilliant St Johnston. Um, we won't have another meeting with Rangers until the beginning of December, but you can bet we'll be live streaming that. But that is all for today on the Bet Bright Football Manager Project Extra bonus materials unless you, we have any more questions. Are you thinking of making the uh, save file available so people can have a bit of an explore and have a go themselves see if they can do do any see if they can do better than you Ian? Oh, doubtless they can do better. We'll be talking to our tech people about that and if we can do it we'll certainly get the link up so you can download the save game file. Fairly sure we'll find a way. In the meantime, keep reading the updates, they'll be on the set pieces, keep checking out BetBright, they'll have the bonus material. We're going to be trying to do more and more interesting things and, and keep sending the messages telling us how appalling we are because that's pretty much what keeps me going in the morning. And just to sign off, Ben Parker says, nothing tactical but you look visibly younger since the old firm derby. God bless you my friend, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you next time.